Hey there, amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in today. You know what? It has been a crazy year. You know, we're just kind of ticking past that um, year since the pandemic really changed everyone's lives. And although we've had to face so much change, we've had to keep being productive. We had to keep things moving forward. And sometimes you've got to really step back and think about what are some things you could do to keep your mojo going, to keep energized, to keep the right attitude, to keep happy. You know, we got to keep the things moving along. But if we're we not in the right mindset, and we don't bring the right energy, then we're definitely not going to be amplifiers. Uh, so today's guest, Dr. Roger Hall, is the author of Staying Happy, Being Productive, the big 10 things successful people do. And that is really something I'm excited to be talking about. You can see the, the background. Um, there's a copy of the book. It is on Amazon. Now, Dr. Roger Hall, he's a business psychologist and works with clients all over the country. He trains leaders to monitor and manage their thinking. Uh, he knows great leaders work on themselves first, and then success in their companies follows. So it all begins within. Roger received his doctorate in psychology from Ohio State University in 1991. He's worked with thousands of leaders and loves to work with small entrepreneurial firms as well. So welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Dr. Roger Hall. Oh, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you, Kenny. Glad to have you here as well. Um, so I'm just curious to take a pulse. Um, you know, what, what is your story to get to where you've gotten to with this? What kind of drew you into this line of work? A, a series of bad career decisions, mostly. Um, Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I never, I never wanted to become a psychologist. It was never anything I was interested in doing, but I was, I was a communication undergrad and um, was interested in persuasion, attitude change, interpersonal communication. And I talked to one of my professors and I said, how can I do this in real life? This was in, at the end of my junior year. And he said, well, go get a PhD in psychology. And I, I said, well, I don't even have an undergraduate degree in psychology. He says, well, you better. And <laughs> I said, well, maybe I could do, you know, get a PhD in communication. He said, no, then you'd be me. And I said, well, what's wrong with that? He says, I hate my job. Oh. <laughs> so I went, I marched over to the psychology department, got a double major, uh, got accepted into graduate school. I did everything the wrong way. Um, got accepted into graduate school, got my doctorate. And I always wanted to work with healthy people who were doing well. And again, a series of bad career decisions. I started doing clinical work with people with fairly serious pathology. And I realized I was really good at it, mm -hmm. but I was miserable. So redeveloped and uh, then started doing executive coaching leadership development, which is a lot like, uh, you know, the, the, the discipline I'm in is called consulting psychology. And we're a lot like sports psychologists. You know, sports psychologists work with peak uh, elite athletes to help them get their head game together mm -hmm. in order for them to succeed more. My job is the same thing with entrepreneurs and business owners to help them, you know, get their head game together. Uh, and what I found is that, um, you know, Yogi Berra said 90% of baseball is mental. The other half is physical, not good at math, but, um, it, the principle is 90% of anyone's success is mental. And so that's what I do is, is I work on people's head games. So if you had to describe yourself in one word, um, no, I, I just you had to describe it. Yeah. Human. I, Human. I, 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 <laughs> no, I, the, I just like the, um, I like what you do because I really feel like you are a true amplifier at the nature of being an amplifier. You, everyone has their own unique gifts. They come with that raw talent. But if, if they're not produced and cultivated and amplified, then it, they're not going to be showing up, giving their full game and achieving their full potential. So just be an advocate to step and and focus and help people go through whatever they need to go through, process whatever they need to process, uh, frame whatever they need to frame is really powerful. And I applaud your efforts. It, it's just my little thing. I You know, 
when I was a, a freshman in college, uh, my roommate, who's who's my best friend, um, mm -hmm. he, he and I were looking at the student newspaper and there was a picture of the president with his chief of staff and the chief of chief of staff was whispering in the president's ear. And my my best friend said he points at the president. And he says, I want to be that guy. And I point at the chief of staff and I say, I want to be that guy, which is I want to advise the, the leaders in the world to help them to do their job better. And, and I, I feel grateful that that is the work that I get to do. So just taking a pulse, because obviously there's a lot of different types of businesses out there. What what types of clients, what sizes of, of clients are a really good fit for um, having your help? Yeah, that, I mean, thank you for asking that. Um, I tend to work really well in what I consider to be the small business space, mm -hmm. somewhere between five and 250 million in annual revenue or between five and 250 employees. They're, mm -hmm. they're mature enough that they, they figured out how to do their business. When I go into the really tiny companies, mm -hmm. I can help them, but they need help in so many other areas first. Like they need to make sure their product is right. They got to get their finances right. They got to get their processes right. That's not my stuff, right? But once they get the product, the process, um, you know, they get their money stuff right, then I can help with the leader um, making sure he or she is leading in a way that gets the best results from, from his or her people. Um, I very often find that the problems in a company are a manifestation of the problems that the leader personally has. His or her head trash infects <laughs> everybody else. Ugh, yeah, that's it's an interesting way of looking at it, but I, I could see how that could be the case. And, you know, as um, a growth coach and, and marketing advisor, I've had the opportunity to look behind the curtains and see kind of what goes on behind a closed door. And sometimes you, you see this wonderful facade on the outside and behind that you see there's there's some challenges here um and that's the way it is in every business i mean there are always challenges in businesses um but but there, there's this impression that that you know great leaders have it all together no they don't i mean that you know they're they they don't have it all together but but they're trying and so they're, they're working, they're working to get better. And that, that's what I think differentiates a great leader from, from somebody who's not is, is they're, they're constantly trying to improve. And I will actually try to call someone out who may be listening in. Some of the people that could probably um, need, need help are the people that are actually doing really good. Like you were saying, they already have some success. And sometimes because of that, they're, not acknowledging some of the limitations they have. They're like, oh, th well, this is working out good. So this over here, that's an issue. Um, I, I don't really need to address that. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot like that guy whose car is running well, except for that one squealing noise. So they turn up the radio really loud so they don't have to hear it. Uh -huh. I mean, the, 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 the warning lights on your dashboard come up for a reason, you know, that that um, and, and so I encourage the leaders that I work with to, to pay attention to the dashboard warning lights because they're, they're telling you something is going to break eventually. And just because everything else is working well, if you've got a problem area, that's the area that's going to blow out. Right. Now, <clears throat> uh, and I can just think of a few examples of some people that I've worked with. And even there's times on my journey where it's like, you're in the ring and boom, boom. Oh, ow. <laughs> you get hurt. And sometimes that that pain can change what you're focusing on, the actions that you take, the goals that you set. And if you can't get someone kind of like to get your mind right, get back in the zone, um, you could be just limiting yourself on, on what's possible, right? So yeah, a, a lot of times I get invited in when somebody is in the midst of a crisis, when they, they did get socked in the jaw and, mm. and they're, and they're kind of reeling from that and, and, you know, helping them gain, regain their equilibrium, 
and then help them, you know, once, once you respond to the crisis, then you can start working on how do we build, how do we build up, you know, you as a person so that you're not constantly responding to crises, but you can be proactive. So if, if you're thinking, you know, tuning in, you know, it's okay to let yourself be vulnerable mm, and admit that sometimes you might need some help uh, because it's, it's actually does you a disservice to not get help when you need it. Um, every champion has coaches to help them achieve better results. Every winning team has coaches to help them get clarity and work on the things that they need to work on. So I just am encouraging people who are tuning in. If you uh, had a troubling time through the pandemic and your business is one of the ones that struggled. Uh, if, if you had lost some clients or uh, made some transitions, um, having personal family um, problems that are now showing up in your workplace, um, your mind's blocking you, you having like imposter syndrome, or maybe you had a partnership that didn't work out. Um, if you have things that you haven't resolved, you've got to work through them to get beyond them. So Roger, if, if you wouldn't mind, if you could start kind of, um, I guess, sharing a little bit about this book that you've got, yeah. Staying Happy, uh, Being Productive, and sh you know, tune us into some of these uh, big things that, that people need to be thinking about to be successful. That would be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so the, 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 the book kind of came from something I learned years ago. I was, I was on my internship and one of my supervisors was teaching us how to do marital therapy. And she said, you know, you can have a couple that doesn't get along and you can teach them how to stop fighting, but that will never make them a happy couple. They'll just, not fight. They'll still mm. be unhappy. And what she said is happy couples behave fundamentally differently than unhappy couples. And that stuck in my head. And then years later, I read a book uh, called Anna Karenina, which is written by a guy named Leo Tolstoy. And the first line of the book is, every happy family is the same. Every unhappy family is unhappy in their own way. And mm. that quote is, is, perfect because what it tells us is that the habits of success and happiness are few and universal. Everybody who's happy and successful does these things. Everybody else, I got my own way. I'm going to do, you know, I'm and, and their lives are spinning out of control in a thousand different ways. And so I started looking for the, uh, among the successful, happy people that I work with, what do they do? And I started keeping a little list on a piece of paper and I got to 10. I said, I got to cut it off. You know, you can't <laughs> have 147 habits. Um, but these really encapsulate um, the things that successful, productive, happy people do. And they, they monitor these areas in their life. And there are 10 of them. The first is thought life. And, and, I spend a tremendous amount of time working to help people take out their head trash. We tell ourselves things that we would never let anyone else tell us. You know, if somebody talked to, to you know, the leaders I work with, if anybody talked to them the way they talk to themselves, they've had them fired. So, so we, we work on monitoring and managing their thought life. That's the first thing. The second thing I found is that they almost always have some sort of active spiritual or faith life. I, I didn't expect that, but it, it's an important part of their life. And, and if you look at the research, the people who have an active spiritual or faith life tend to be happier than those who aren't. And there's a ton of research out there on that. The, the next is um, work life. They love their work. They may not make a ton of money, but they love what they do. So they, they have to have that squared away. The next is money life. And everybody says, well, I, you know, if I had more money, all my problems would be solved. And what we've learned is that if you don't have enough money, you know, lack of money, money won't make you happy, but lack of money will make you miserable. So you've got to have a certain amount of money 
to not be miserable. But after that, you can go a long way and make a ton of money and not really improve your level of happiness. I, I could really just attest to that. And I think in our culture, it's even more uh, insidious, right? Because we are in this need to have more materialistic, got to measure up with the Joneses sort of culture. Even if you're not trying to be, you're getting programmed to kind of have those feelings and humans is nature. We compare and we, we contrast. And before you know it, you think, Oh, once I get here, then I'll, I'll, then I'll be all right. And then you do it. And then there's always the next thing. And there's always the next thing. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I have a friend, he always drove Chevy's and his, his cars were always a dump. You know, you, you get in the passenger side and you have to clear the, the McDonald's, you know, bags out of the footwell. And, and they were all direct. <laughs> well, he bought himself a BMW and he said, this thing is awesome, you know, and he's talking about all the stuff. And six months later, you know, I get in his car and it's full of, you know, it, it, it's full of, uh, of McDonald's things in the footwell. And there's a there's a pancake pressed, you know, with maple syrup to the back of the seat. And, you know, and he was sure that this was going to make him happy. And it just went back to being a Chevy with a different nameplate. Right. Yeah. I, that reminds me of a, a friend. Maybe they were related, but I was I got in his ridiculous car with all that junk, and then I'm mo- trying to move my feet around in the ridiculous amount of junk that was in this car. Um, and then I hear a, poof. I'm like, I don't know what that was. And then I start smelling garlic. I'm like, he had a Papa John's garlic butter thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, dude, out of all the things you could have in your car. In the floorboard, that's probably one of the worst. Dude, yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's a memory that'll last for years, right? <laughs> good job. All right, so that's that. That was good tuning in. Um, it was a great story, man. <laughs> so anyway, so that's money life. So they figured out their money life. Then successful, happy people are really, really careful about the food they put in their system. So nutritional life is very important. They all exercise. So what they put in their system and how they move their body, those things make them happy. I mean, the, the, the least expensive, most reliable way you can improve your mood is to exercise. And if you're not eating right, you're not getting the basic building blocks of the neurotransmitters that run your brain. So your brain occupies between two and 5% of your body mass but consumes 20 to 25% of the fuel in your food. Hmm. So this takes about a quarter of the calories that we take in. So, and it takes all of that nutrition, the things that make serotonin and norepinephrine and GABA and acetylcholine, where do those come from? Well, maybe not from a pill bottle, they come from the food you eat. So if you're not eating nutrient dense food, You're not giving your brain the chemistry it needs in order to think well. So so that they figured out their exercise life, their nutritional life. They all sleep well. So sleep and rest life. Um, If there's one thing that you want to change to improve the quality of your life, it's get better sleep. Your mom was right when she said, young man, you need eight hours of sleep. Actually, when you're a young man, you need nine hours of sleep. When you're my age, you need eight hours of sleep. And that's because when we sleep, our brain rebuilds itself. Um, It actually, there's no blood in our brain, Mm -hmm. but at night our brain contracts and then expands. And it's in this bath of this stuff called cerebrospinal fluid. And it needs to do that contraction to get all the ick out. So all the all the debris that builds up, mm-hmm. your brain needs to contract at night to get rid of all the ick so you're not stewing in that same ick night after night and day after day. Wow. So there, there's a lot of other things. It rebuilds during the night. Your dreams help you rebuild. So sleep life, sleep and rest life, they, they all need 
you know, we all need time for quiet reflection. You know, this, mm -hmm. you know, which I, I like, I like my phone, but this constant distractedness, we need time of doing nothing. So the next is recreational life, mm -hmm. which is great, great, happy, successful people have fun. They, they have hobbies, they have activities that, that they enjoy. And the last two are um, social life. The leaders I work with a lot of the times, they don't have good friends. They have minions, you know, they have people who work for them, but they don't really have friends. And what we know is that people who have stable, long lasting relationships tend to recover from illness more quickly. They, they live longer. So having an active social support network. And then the last is love life is that primary love relationship and um, happy, successful people work on their family. And you, and you, you hinted at this earlier is that if you're having trouble at home, it's going to get into your workplace. Well, you're absolutely right. If you have trouble at home, you're going to have trouble at work. And if you have trouble at work, you're going to have trouble at home. So make sure those primary love relationships are there. So those are the big 10 things that every one of them focuses on. So, so I love, I love the, the fact, fact that you've you taken the time to study it and then you've compiled it into a list. You know, one of the books that I've talked about a few times on here is, is Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich, yeah. And it's a similar concept. However, um, that's maybe focusing like on the entrepreneurial side of like building cash. But if you don't have your mind right, <laughs> um, then you're it's kind of like you don't you can't excel at that if your mind's not right. So like, like this is the preliminary thing that you need to get taken care of is making sure you're holistically grounded and and amplified to to move forward your vision. Well, you, I, the way I kind of look at it is every performance athlete has coaches, right? Mm -hmm. But every performance athlete has a strength coach, which is that basic building block. I mean, there, there are skills that a golfer has that's different than a wide receiver, but both of them are working to build that basic strength. And that's what this is. This is the, this, this, these are the basic building blocks upon which you can build everything else. So what would be the, so for somebody that's, that's tuning in and they're thinking, you know, maybe I could improve upon this, but where do I get started? What, what is something that they could do? And how, how can they get an idea of where they're at? Because that's one of the, the other th challenges that when I'm working with someone, um, typically they've got so many different things going on and they have they don't really have clarity on where they're at compared to where they want to go and, and the pathway to get started. Right. Great. Great. In, in the book, mm -hmm. I have at the end of every chapter, you rate yourself on where you are. And at the end of the book, you rate yourself on each of the big 10. And then there are multiple pages that you can you can copy so that you can you can see where you are on a scale of one to 10 on each of them. If you go to my website, uh, you can download a free PDF that has that. And so you can look and say, OK, I'm strong here. I'm weak here. And and what I'd encourage people to do. And, and so you can go to drrogerhall.com and download that free PDF. But what I encourage people to do is is look at each of those areas of your life and then just pick one area to fix. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you know, New Year's resolution. I'm going to change all of these things about me and I'm going to, you know, it's, it's a new year. Um, and then, you know what, like January 17th is, Kenny? It's National uh, Quitters Day. Oh, okay. didn't know that. <laughs> it, it's when everybody quits their New Year's resolutions. It, it's less than three weeks after the resolutions. And you know why they quit? Is they've uh, made too many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you just make one. So what I would do is, is you know, get that list. Circle the one that you're weakest on and say, okay, that's the thing I'm going to work on until I get that better. I applaud that. <clears throat> if you've, t <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you tuned into uh, Growth Amplifiers before, you may have heard me 
admit my Achilles heel um, on my journey to kind of get a, get along was I'm a visionary and I've had you know a lot of ideas and it's great it's great to have that but it also can prevent you from really getting traction with moving some of those forward yeah so I've gained awareness and strengthened the differentiation between um, creating an idea and then putting it into action yeah and it's that focus that f- getting really laser focused on choosing um, one <laughs> maybe two but just primarily focusing on one thing, moving it forward, it makes a tremendous difference. So I'm just, um, you know, complimenting that approach because that is probably out of all the people that I connect with, the biggest um, block that that they're all dealing with. They're trying to do too many things at the same time and not getting a result in any of the one areas. Right. And so, so if I had to pick any of the ten, I, I mentioned it before. Work on your sleep first. It is a basic building block habit. Um, You know, I was a person who for decades of my life went on five to six hours of sleep a night and I'd muscle through it and, you know, have a cup of coffee and I'd be like, woohoo, you know, I could do it. Mm -hmm. But that takes a toll on your brain. So Mm. if, if the people who are watching or listening out there, if I was to tell you to start with one thing, it's get better sleep. I also like that as well. I, I, I got to have all my sleep. I realize that when I get tired, I start getting a little bit more frustrated. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then I'm now being frustrated and not showing up with the right energy to the things I'm trying to get done. And that doesn't help anything. It, and then you have like a, a downward spiral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I applaud the idea of focusing on being happy. You know, if you're going to, going to work your passion or try to move forward your mission or amplify your business to do whatever it is you want to do with it, why not enjoy the ride and really be happy along that process? Yeah. And you can choose to do that. And I've connect with some business professionals who they want to be there, right? But they're just not happy with the way things are going. But this is a, this is a path. This is an an olive branch for somebody who's thinking I'm, I'm, I'm just not having fun right now to take some pr- proactive action mm-hmm. to really improve the happiness in your life. So we, we chatted um, the website, drrogerhall.com. And as mentioned, there is a, a quiz on there that you could take. Um, and what are some other actions that people could take if they were interested in learning more about you, what you do and how you might be able to help them out? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you asking that. Um, so the website is drrogerhall.com, drrogerhall.com. You can download the, um, that, that free PDF I told you about. Um, you can order my book on my website. Uh, if you go to stayinghappybeingproductive.com, you can, um, you can order it straight there. Um, I have an online course that I developed for people who are freaking out. Uh, because a lot of people have been freaking out lately. Uh, and it's called, if you go to freakoutcourse.com, you can you can learn more about that. And it, it really is helping people overcome their worry and anxiety so that they can be more productive. Uh, so it's a, it's a four session course uh, that, that's, that's all, all encompassing. Uh, it's about 10 hours of content. So it's it's a really good course. So if you'd like to reach out to me, find me at uh, drrogerhall.com. Excellent. Well, amplifiers, at the end of the day, it's not about listening and just being entertained. It's about taking new actions to continue to amplify. So be sure to take advantage of one of those options um, to do something that your future self will thank you for. Um, and as we're wrapping up, uh, if you would be so kind, you've shared a lot of great information and insights that have been really helpful. So thank you. But if you had to share just one more thought or a piece of wisdom that you've learned on your journey that might be worth passing along to someone who is on theirs, what might that be? I, I, it may be just kind of reiterating that, um, you know, we all have a stream of consciousness that runs through our head you know, the, the, all these thoughts that run through our head all day. 
And great leaders take a ladle and they sample what's in their stream of consciousness. And so they begin to monitor what's in their stream of consciousness. And you can't ever control what you're thinking until you start monitoring that. And people who are mentally disciplined can control their thoughts, which can then limit and control their emotions and limit and control their behavior. But first and foremost, it's getting control of your thoughts. I love it. I uh, being awareness, having awareness, making sure that you're in the right zone so that you can take the right actions. So thank you for joining us and tuning in. Be sure to check out his website, take advantage of the offers he had presented. And um, we appreciate having you guest on Growth Amplifiers. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you so much, Kenny. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.